Hello, my friends. This is Barbara Langston, CZT, Certified Centangle Teacher. And I've been playing with um, some Ecoline liquid watercolors um, to put some color on my tiles. And I thought, well, I might as well show you how I'm doing it. I really like using the Lindy's Magicals, but uh, I was looking at some tiles that Annika, who is also Zen Linnea, has shared. And I really like how hers look. And she's the one that inspired me, <coughs> excuse me, to buy these um, Ecoline inks uh, or watercolors. And the one I bought is just this basic. It has five colors in it. <coughs> Excuse me, yellow, blue. Um, not sure what you'd call this one. A reddish, uh, green, and uh, dark gray, black. But the main ones that I use are these three, which are basically the primary colors. <clears throat> and you can mix any kind of, of those colors together to get other colors like orange if you needed it. Um, I want to show you what it looks like if I put these colors straight on to paper. And this is uh, Fabriano Tiepolo paper that I get from Dick Black. And I'm going to Just put some water across here. And show you what it looks like with these three basic colors. Okay, so this one first. Okay, it's pretty bright. I guess you'd almost call it a fuchsia. It looks pretty red on the screen, but it's not. And then this blue. So those are gonna mix together to be purple. And then here's the yellow. Careful. 205. And then you can, you know, move these around. Um, spray a little bit more water on top. I like how they move, but for me, they're too bright. Okay. And so when I was working on those uh, tiles that I just showed you, I watered down the ink before I put it on. So, oh, that's kind of pretty. I still might be able to move these around. That's what I like about these is um, they're different from the Lindy's Magicals because after I have put it down, I can move these colors around a little bit. And I will probably use this piece of paper for a uh, bookmark. Okay, so I'm just gonna let that sit. And what I did, rather than drop the ink right out of the bottles, is I put some ink into this palette. And then I'm adding water, except to the yellow. Um, I'm gonna wait on that one. So I'm gonna just water these down because I want a pale background that's easy to color over. This is a combination of this one and that one to make a purple. And I'm gonna test those colors here just to see how bright they are 
I'm going to add another drop of water. That one. Okay, cleaning my brush. Now I'm going to try this purple mix. Oh, that's nice. Okay, and that's not too dark, so that one's okay. And then I'm going to try this one. And it's not too terribly dark. Okay. And I'm just playing so that this paper looks okay when I'm finished. I'll still have something I can use. I can go back, add a little bit more up here. Okay, so I think I like the mix on those. I'm not going to add any more water. And I'm just going to keep my yellow as it is. And I like the pop of yellow on my tiles. And I don't mind if that's a little bit bright. Okay, so what I do is I get my tile. And these are four inch tiles of the Fabriano tie up low. And the first thing I'm going to do is just spray it a little bit with water and then get my brush and just even out the water on here. I was um, really inspired by the last project pack from Zentangle because they were showing how to put a background on your tiles. And they were using the, the graphite pencil that I can't remember the name of it now, but um, I like putting color. So now that I've got that wet, uh, one of the things that I can do is just kind of pop this color down. Okay, I'm gonna clean my brush and I'm gonna get some blue. I don't need a lot. I'm going to pop that. Okay. And my brush, and now I'm going to get some purple. Purple's my favorite, so I don't mind getting a little bit extra of that. Okay, clean my brush. Now I'm gonna get yellow, and I may not have enough yellow there, but yeah, that's good. Okay. So you could leave it like that. But I want to now spray this with more water to make it spread out and blend a little bit better. You could blow on it. Once you get enough water on there, you can uh, let it move a little bit. And if you've got too much water, just let it come to the edge. You can also use your brush once you get it kind of dry. You can come along the edge with it. <clears throat> 
excuse me and pick up some of that water. Okay, so that's a nice, simple background. Uh, one thing you can do is wet the other side of this tile a little bit to help it to uh, flatten a little bit easier. And then I have a uh, dryer or heat gun. <clears throat> that makes my dog crazy. Okay, so it's going to be a little bit noisy. Okay, I'm not going to use this one right away, so I'm just going to put it aside to let it dry and grab another tile i'm going to start out basically the same way wet it and then use my brush and i'm getting it pretty wet i think i'll go ahead and put a little bit of water on the other side on this one <clears throat> If you have a fairly good amount of water, then it has a nice effect. Okay, so I'm still going to use that brush. And then I'm just going to put some splashes of color on here. And you could go through this, kind of move these colors around. This is still a little bit brighter than I would like it. <clears throat> Excuse me. I think everything is blooming in Texas right now, so. My allergies are on high alert. Okay, so I'm going to pick up some of that color. That's what I like. I like a muted background. Okay. Let's set that one aside to dry. And I may have to find a way to flatten those, but uh, okay, let's just finish by putting some more color on this one. And eventually I'll put uh, patterns on here to make it into a bookmark. So here I'm just going to do Kind of a wash. And I am by no means an expert when it comes to um, watercolors. <laughs> I'm just showing you how I'm playing with this today. Okay. 
So because I really like the muted background colors. I'm going to use my brush to pick up some of this color. Okay, I'm actually going to try one more doing the um, kind of what Maria did on hers for um, Project Pack 13. So I don't want a huge amount of water on here, but I do want to wet it. And she did kind of leaf patterns. Cross her tile. Hmm. I'm not sure what to think about this. This is how you learn. <clears throat> Interesting, because I can really see the blue coming out around the edges here. More dot here. And then I'm going to go ahead and spray it because I'm not real thrilled with how this is looking. Excuse me. Interesting. Okay, so these are the ones that I have so far. This one that will be a bookmark. Okay. This one that I had already done. And this one would make a really pretty botanical type flow coming up that way. I really like how that one came out. And then that one is drying nicely. And then that one. But I think my favorites are these two. And I just did them by um, picking color up the cut at the end of this brush after my tile was wet. Let me get it wet real quick. And then I got color on this. Just tapped like that in different directions. <clears throat> then I cleaned my brush 
and it's kind of brushed across. And the ink was more wet on these, <clears throat> excuse me, when I put the extra water on top. So that's what made it flow. And I'll show you that. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, this is how that one came out. I got interrupted. So basically, I just put a little bit more purple on top of it. <clears throat> and I could put another color over this. I'm not sure how much I like that one. But it still might look really nice with a Zentangle pattern over it. Just have fun with it. Just play with it. I really like how this turned out up here. I don't necessarily like the lines going down the side, but I could always cut those off or make this the bookmark or give that to my granddaughters. <laughs> they would have fun coloring on it. Anyway, I hope this helped you. Hope you enjoyed it. And I will see you next time. Bye.